I'm Andrew Topf with Investing News Network, and I'm here with Chris Loki. Chris is President and Chief Engineer at Planetary Resources. Chris, thanks for being with us. It's great to be here with you today, Andrew. Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of background research on your company, and what you're doing is pretty exciting stuff, asteroid mining. Um, although some traditional mining folks might see it as a little out there. So let's start uh, with some facts. A little out there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, Planetary Resources has some pretty high profile backers, including James Cameron, everybody's familiar with, uh, Larry Page from Google, and Ross Perot. So are these people on board as purely advisors, or do they have a financial role as well? Because I notice you're a, a private company. Well, James Cameron is on board as an advisor. He's an explorer. He's been very supportive. He, of course, has been exploring the Earth and sea and space. Uh, but the other gentlemen, Ross Perot Jr. and uh, Larry Page, other folks like Eric Schmidt, Charles Simone, uh, even Richard, Richard Branson recently, uh, all have a financial stake in the company, and they are very excited about our future. Okay. Mining on Earth is a tough enough business. It is. So why do we need to go into space to find minerals? Well, you think about the business of mining and what mining does for our quality of life here on Earth. Uh, we've expanded into frontiers through the use of resources. Uh, we've sometimes done it to pursue the resources. But resources are always involved as we are growing and prospering. Uh, what we're finding now is that humans are starting to expand into space, and our footprint is kind of going beyond the planet. And necessarily, I think we'll find that our resource base kind of needs to follow where humanity is going to go. Uh, resources will actually help us settle those frontiers in space, and maybe one day we'll actually bring some of those resources back here for use on Earth. Okay. Which minerals are asteroids known to contain? Um, and I also understand you're not only looking for minerals, but, but just plain water as well. Yes, so uh, many people uh, probably are familiar with meteorites. We've had 50,000 meteorites land on the Earth, and meteorites were once asteroids orbiting the sun. And from that, we can know a lot about what they're made of. Uh, we have some over in our booth today made of iron and nickel and cobalt, the uh, metallic asteroids as they're known. Others are mostly silicate material. And then a third type, which actually is one that we're very interested in, is carbonaceous asteroids. These are the ones that have the water in them. And to speak briefly about water as a mineral or something that we might mine or extract, water is going to be really foundational to our future activity in space. We're humans, we're made of the stuff, of course. Uh, it really helps all of our food and growth processes. It's an industrial solvent that we use to move stuff around. Uh, but in space, it takes on kind of two new dimensions. One is that we can use it for radiation shielding. Just like our atmosphere protects us from the environment of space, a little bit of water will give you that same protection for future space explorers. And then lastly, um, water is hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen are rocket fuel. The same fuel that actually fueled all 135 space shuttle launches is something that we can actually get in space to fuel the infrastructure that we'll need to move around in space itself. So these are resources to use where we're going to go, where we're going to operate, and really to fuel activity from, from there and beyond. Yeah, wow, it's really interesting. Okay, so here's a $64 million question. Assuming you're able to find asteroids close enough to Earth mm -hmm. to actually mine them, uh, how do you mine them and get them get the minerals back to Earth? Yeah, well, great question. There's something, of course, in a, a mining conference uh, everyone wants to know about. So we're prospecting today. We're learning about asteroids, learning about the actual material and how it actually, like a resource body, how you would devise a system to mine it. Uh, in normal mining, of course, you don't take the whole mine to the refinery, so you want to reduce it down to the, the lowest mass part you can to save on transportation costs. We'll do that same thing with asteroids, and we'll really just reduce it down to the bits that we're interested in. And we'll have three advantages, I think, in space that we don't have here on Earth. One is that we've got an infinite energy source. The sun is giving us uh, energy every day in the fuller form of thermal energy. We just need to concentrate that energy. We can turn mining into a thermal process. Uh, also also is part of that thermal process. The rest of space that's not the sun is very cold, minus 270 degrees centigrade. So we can then take that material we've heated up, cool it back down. And all of this we can do free of gravity and also in a vacuum, the type of vacuum that in Earth you would pay big money for. So it's not so much that it will be uh, more difficult than it is in Earth, here on Earth, but it'll certainly be a little bit different. Yeah, okay. 
So in 2012, NASA said it would fund a study into the viability of asteroid mm -hmm. mining. So I was just wondering, is there anything to report yet from that study? Yeah, I think that study completed. I'm familiar with uh, many of the individuals who were on it. And they did a kind of a survey of this saying that this is something that is, is going to happen soon. Uh, it certainly will require, as any large scale project does, of some infrastructure and some investment in doing that. But we have enough information and there are uses for resources in space, such as for future fuel depots uh, and maybe even the potential of bringing some of those resources back to Earth. Okay. Um, I was reading last summer that research, researchers from Scotland have identified 12 asteroids close enough for mining, close enough to Earth for mining. So do you have any plans to use that information for your own purposes? Well, that's really the great thing about what we're working on. I like, uh, a lot of people uh, in the mining community today benefit from satellite observations and geology data and public funded studies. The whole world has been looking at asteroids for 200 years. A lot of science has been done on it, a lot of public funds go into understanding asteroids. So like the study that was done, University of Strathclyde, I think was the one you mentioned, uh, is a great study just showing how close some of these objects can be uh, and we can build upon those studies and really turn it into an actionable business plan. This is primarily a conference for investors. So is part of the reason for you being here to attract private funding from investors? Do you, do you have any plans to go public as a company? Well, certainly, uh, you know, in the U.S., uh, we're a U.S.-based, uh, privately held company. Uh, we're based out of Seattle. Uh, we would certainly love to take our company public through an initial public offering in the States. Understanding in Canada, of course, the public companies are uh, something that are a little bit more common. We see what we're doing as a technology company also opening up doors to prospect generation and being able to find asteroid resources that we can develop, maybe through special project financing. And we're really here this week at VRIC looking at the different opportunities that are available, how investors look at opportunities, how they evaluate the risk, the information they're looking to make decisions on, and maybe we could actually fund some of these projects through public markets in that fashion. Um, how do you see investors being able to profit from asteroid mining? Uh, well, I think just like they do anywhere else. Uh, in many cases, you could see uh, space resources and the limits on space resources, which are practically none, being one of the biggest growth opportunities there might be. Uh, I was spoke at a, a mining conference at CIM last year and uh, was mentioned that this might be the greatest opportunity for wealth creation since the settling of the new world. So uh, it's not only about the resource and what can be made about bringing that resource to a market, but the information surrounding making decisions on those resources uh, and of course all the business opportunities that will develop around it as these new markets come into, come into being. Great. Well, it seems like uh, a really interesting area to be in and uh, Certainly. wish you best of luck with it. All right. Thanks a lot. So it's, um, it's been great speaking with you. Um, Chris Lewicki has been joining me. Um, I'm Andrew Topp from Investing News Network. Thank you very much.